back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. It is Super Bowl weekend. I'm on a Saturday before the Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going to pull for Cincinnati this year. I mean, the way they came back from behind and defeated Kansas City, that was awesome. So I'm thinking they have momentum, but don't count out the Rams. Either team could be really good. Cincinnati doesn't get there that much, you know, so I'm trying to give them a little boost. Come on, I'm pulling for the underdog. But I have a wonderful Bobby Fisher game to share with you. I'm doing Bobby Fisher series again. Yes! Remember, he is still 13 years old. I'm trying to play through all of his tournament games, help us sharpen up our games. This is a wonderful game. He plays against Sidney Bernstein. They do a Rui Lopez. Yes, a most exquisite and a very old chess opening. If you know what you're doing, it is a very sound way to win a lot of chess games. He will bring the standard typical, the beautiful response. He bumps his bishop back. In this instance, sometimes this is delayed uh, so that they can further develop. But in this instance, Bernstein says, no, let's chase that bishop all the way down. This also potentially gives Bernstein a, an advanced wingside attack. Perhaps if he catches Bobby off guard, he can do something significant with a wingside attack. However... You go back to the center. Yeah. Okay. So, all good. All good. Bobby hur hurries and tucks the king away to safety. That's always a good thing. And here comes Bernstein. Pin on the knight, pinning it to the queen. So, Bobby has to play careful. And then he does this. That, that wasn't... No, you're, you're not... You're not... You don't have to worry about tucking your bishop away just yet. Uh, but this is a habit that served Bobby faithfully through his years of playing. In this particular instance, there were better ways to keep going. Now, Bernstein immediately brings out more oomph. Right? So, it appears that Bernstein is going to try to develop some kind of a wing kingside attack here. Doesn't it? I mean, that's, that's what it looks like he's aiming for. Bobby is going to go ahead and match the extra advancement on the other wing. Now, the typical strategy, of course, fight for the center, fight for the center. And yet, uh, well, I mean, there's nothing going on technically. No, it's not blocked, the center. It's not blocked yet. There's not a lot you can do just at the moment. So Bobby is going to at least not let a roller come against him on the wing. Yeah, so this is why I suspect he pushed the pawn. And Bernstein advances his pawn. He does not do the exchange because that would just give Bobby a partial open file. But now Bobby goes ahead and pushes the pawn. And therefore, on this wing, it looks like he's basically turned off any kind of a really good, strong wing side attack. So this is kind of interesting how he works. Bernstein is going to bring whoops another piece into the game, which is very proper. And now Bobby will put his bishop back up. Now this is interesting. But, you know, I've said before in videos that if you can put your rook across from your opponent's king or queen, either one. It doesn't matter how many pieces is between them, that's a good move. Well, the same thing, all of your long-range pieces, the rooks, the queens, the bishops, it's best if you can use a weaker piece to do the pin, but put your piece across from the opponent's king so the knight is pinned. Yeah? Now, it's covered, but it is pinned. Well, very interestingly, Bernstein reacts to that. He's really uncomfortable with that. So, wow, that's kind of interesting here. Not, not an error, but it's just interesting how it, uh, how it gives him enough that he doesn't 
fear, he doesn't feel the need to have to castle. So now the king is going to be in the center for this game. So solidify your own center. You're not in any kind of a rush. Ah, but Bernstein appears to be. Let's go ahead and jump on this king side now. Bobby will retake with the pawn, doubling his pawns, creating weaknesses on his king side. So Bernstein has achieved an interesting objective here. And he is still now, he, <laughs> he was on this side, now he's going to that wing, right? So Bernstein is trying to be an aggressive player. Apparently Bobby's reputation, even as a 13-year-old is, watch out for this kid, he is aggressive. Maybe one of the ways to staunch his aggressiveness is to be aggressive yourself. Who knows what, how Bernstein was coached, but he is definitely not playing passive chess. This gives Bobby a chance to bring up another piece, and now, now, See, again, this theme, rook across from your opponent's king, regardless of what's in between them. So, uh, and, and it does a develop. I mean, he's not going to be able to castle, so why not put that rook there and push that pawn all the way down? Yeah. So it looks for all the world like Bernstein is preparing a kingside attack. So you have to be cognizant of this, of what your opponent is doing as well as what you're doing because it's always a two-sided game. Yeah, we know all that. That's basic stuff. But I'm just pointing this out because it's a good review. Bobby is still bringing pieces out. There's not a direct immediate danger to his king. This is true. So technically he doesn't have to waste his time moving his king remaining undeveloped. At this juncture, it is better to bring in more power. And so that's what we see Bobby doing. So this is a great way to, to learn chess, to help us with our chess. And now, what the heck? Uh, yeah, I don't know. He really is trying to be aggressive, right? And so you know he's going to try to put the rook on the h-file and come after that lone h-pawn because that's the weakness now. And so... He's attempting to really let Bobby know. I mean, he's projecting, I'm coming after your king, right? Well, you don't have to freak out just yet. Look at Bobby's response. Once again, as a general principle, it appears like Bernstein is playing on his wings. It, nothing happened here, so they are maintaining the tension for now. But no, nothing's really going to happen here yet. So Bernstein is focusing over here. So he, he is playing wing. Bobby properly responds with a central push. Work in the center when your opponent is working on the wings. That is fundamental. I mean, every grandmaster book in the world will tell you that. And here we see that occurring. Really important to, to just at least see this. The queen will come to e6, the weak square, of course, h3. The queen is touching the weak square. The rook over, and blam, checkmate. So do you freak out yet? No, because you've got at least one, two, three more moves before he can deliver the checkmate. Well, that's a long way off. So don't fret. Let's see what Bobby does. He does, however, get off of that file at this point. Okay, because he can run this pawn in and then you're really in trouble. See, either way, if he doesn't get off the file, if, if he runs this pawn in and Bobby takes, then the queen takes check and now you're in trouble again. Because then the pawn is gone and you've got rook and queen connected. So, step off the file. That makes sense. Here comes Bernstein bringing up another piece, bishop g7, and Here's what else looks pretty good. It is far better to have the rook opposing the rook than your own king opposing the rook. So nice, nice play. Now Bobby is getting a little bit more power on the king side. Not that he's safe, but at least he's not in imminent danger.
Danger, Will Robinson! <laughs> yeah, for those of you who are my, yeah. Danger, danger, Will... Yeah, stop it. Okay, here we go. Lost in space, just so you know. So, now, what happens is, Bobby comes to the world, and Bernstein brings his bishop again. So, he is trying to get more power out, and, and he's a little cramped, so, but in the process of trying to get coordinated with as many pieces as you can, that's a good general rule, too. The more pieces you can do a kingside attack, get involved with it, the the more likely your kingside attack will bear fruit. All right, that's just basic stuff. Sure, but it's by practicing the basics. Mikhail Tal, our all-time favorite of everybody, said in his champion year, he was known to us that when he was the world champion, he said, oh, I love studying those kids' strategies. He said, I'm constantly reading basic kids and basic tactics. I always study the basic tactics because you never know when they'll come in handy. So basic principles, fundamentally so. you got to practice them. That's what makes your chess stronger. Shut up and show us the next move, cowboy! Rook C1. Well, no. That, that, that didn't do a whole lot. Uh, this does give Bernstein the rook to bishop 8. And now he finally says, okay. He waited for the rook before he released the tension. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? C takes B. Now, because of the pawn structure of Fisher, Bernstein plops the knight right there in the center, and that knight is a beautifully powerful centralized night, isn't it? That's a good... No pawn is going to chase that knight away. So Bernstein is basically forcing an exchange of pieces here. Technically, you really, if you can at all help it, Bobby doesn't really have a plan of aggression for attacking that central king just yet, right? So, uh, you have to, you have to get rid of that knight. You have to watch that central knight. I think Bernstein understands this. In other words, that was a very good move. Again, too, I'd like to point out, just for kicks and giggles, Bobby still has his bishop pair. Uh, Bernstein only has the one bishop. Now, in this particular instance, since the board is not wide open, there's a lot of pieces still on the board, and they're all just kind of right there. So it's not like the bishops are going to be overly powerful, right? But Bobby does lose his bishop pair with this exchange. And at, at this point, that's not a crisis. I'm just simply pointing that out, that now they each have just the one bishop. Uh, and they are opposite colored bishops. So you have to pay attention to little details like that, right? So this will be real interesting to see how, how, they, uh, how they respond to this. Bobby wants to get all of his pieces into this game, as you always do. So the queen to c2, and... The rook will take the b4. Now, this looks like a lightning bolt shot. Wow! Uh, you've got all your bases covered. Now, it's true, he got a, he got a pawn, and he does have a good uh, partial open file. He also has another target. That is true. He released the tension as well. So, but... You don't have to all of a sudden begin to focus on that single rook. Well, he's in my territory. He's attacking. He's coming into my territory. This is all true. But the real point is not to worry about that rook just yet. There are better things to do. For instance, what did we just witness? We witnessed a move, or rather an attack on the wing. What is the proper response for wing play? 
central play. It, it's not. Bobby's only 13 here. That He knows that principle is really cool. So, so I point that out to us yet again. Now, we've seen this a couple times already in this game, and we see Bobby Fischer being consistent. Overall, this is the correct kind of responding that Bobby is doing. Just, I'm just pointing that out so that, so that you can see that he is not freaking out. And now a real questionable move. The Rook took the Knight. Now, it was a central night, that's for sure. And it, this pawn was getting pressure, but, yeah, he, he got a question mark. And then Bobby responded this way, and he got a question mark. <laughs> a question and explanation. Not the best. Not the best. So we're seeing a few moves here that are somewhat not as powerful as they could have been, but we are dealing with kids, and I'm not trying to offend any kids. This is Bobby Fisher kid, but I mean, you know, he is in the process of strengthening his entire chess repertoire. Now look what he does here. He's going to, of course, he's going to tease the queen, but the thing I want to point out is sitting here somewhat idly, okay, yes, he's keeping touch on the pawn, but this partial open file isn't nearly as good as taking a central file. And of course, Bernstein's going to move the queen, of course. But look what Bobby has now, a central file. Now that is better than a wing file in this particular setup. And so Bobby is trying to get a stronger position. That's what we're seeing here. So this isn't bad. Queen will come to f4. Now, really interestingly here, um, he does have the central file. He also has, notice where the bishop's pointing. So there, there is a, there is a forward-looking potential excellent coordination of bishop and rook to attack. Just, just keeping our eye on the, on the ideas here. So, Bobby now says, why don't we get rid of some more power? Yeah, very interesting. He offers, he offers the exchange, and truly, Bernstein, Bernstein has to exchange, yes. But observe that Bernstein doesn't immediately react to the exchange to, to Bobby's move here. Number one, a one, a, a very interesting thing to notice is his bishop is still limited on this diagonal, right? It's still choked down. So why not centralize rather than exchange with the queens on Bobby's term on the open file? Why not centralize and use your bishop? better, because you know eventually the queens are going to come off the board. Yeah, You don't want to just start playing defense and trying to keep your queen. That's just wasting time, because Bobby has that central open file and the diagonal of the white squared bishop. There is serious potential for checkmate attacks with that combination. So, uh, but I love how Bernstein did this. That was excellent. He did not just immediately freak out and react to Bobby. He involved yet another piece. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like how he did that. So queen takes f4. And bishop takes f4. Now the bishop is on the outpost. The bishop is blockading those double five, those double pawns. Now if he can attack those pawns, they are a weakness. And the bishop now is sitting on an outpost that he can't be chased away with pawns. And he's got some pretty good angles. Remember, Bernstein isn't that far off either. So they're both somewhat closing in. And yet, it's beginning to look dryish now, isn't it? So we get to see some excellent 
end game concepts here. Because really, truly, <laughs> this is looking dryish at this point. Yeah, they're both setting themselves up for potential attacks. They're, they can coordinate really pretty easy at this point. Uh, the knight doesn't inspire us. You know, the minor piece of Bernstein, this bishop's beautiful. This knight's kind of the weak player out. This bishop's beautiful, and the rook... This rook on this file isn't as powerful, so both players have ways to improve their position and strengthen their pieces. But, yeah. And, and this is what Bobby's trying to do. Rook C to D1. Grab a target. Got the pawn. And it's a central pawn. It's a target pawn. Yeah. So, well, that puts the kibosh on that. Not only does it stop Bobby from advancing his pawn, but now, just one move, just like that, blam, and Bernstein center looks unassailable. That is a, you go, wow, whoops. Not whoops, though. Look at what Bobby has. He's been holding that pawn move in reserve, and now he can undermine Bernstein's center. And he does want to do this, uh, because open files are much better than closed files. Yeah. So go ahead and crack open the, the center, is, is how Bobby's thinking. And, that, and that's entirely possible. Or, or uh, this is good. In the process, he understands Bernstein's going to gain this pass pawn, of course. So you got to kind of keep an eye on the pass pawn. I mean, it's not imminent danger at this point, but it is a pass pawn, so we still have some end game strategy. The strategy of the end game is blockade the pawn, but if you can't, you have to at least keep an eye on it and make sure you can get to it before it queens, right? Okay, so, so again, we're seeing a little bit of tension build somewhat, potentially. So, where was I before I kept blabbing my mouth? Yeah, and now he, he'll take the pawn. Yes, truly, yeah. Still a partial open file, but again, directly across from the king as well. Yeah. And this pawn isn't guarded except for the rook, so you might have a breakthrough if you can get that rook off that row. We shall see. Well... Speaking of rooks, yeah. Now notice what Bernstein does here. This is good. This this is really nice how he does this. At this point, the pawn is covered, yeah. So really, that's an inactive rook. And I mean, it's been inactive for several moves now, right? You did bump it up, so truly, you really do need to use it. Well, Bobby is claiming a central file. And you can't just let your opponent, if at all possible, you just can't let your opponent have that central file uncontested. The rook is sort of a lazy piece at this point. Put him to work, and that's exactly what Bernstein does. Great chess, truly. Th that's excellent. He did get the file rested from him. So, uh, at this point, he doesn't want to exchange because it would give Bernstein a very powerful central majority of pawns for one item. I mean, there's other reasons, but that's one thing why Bobby did not want to exchange. The other reason is uh, Bobby is technically up. He's got both rooks and one minor, and Bernstein only has one rook but two minors. One minor really isn't doing a lot. This one's really well placed. Uh, so keep the rooks is the theme. So yes, he lost the open file. Keep the rooks and acquire a target in the process. That makes sense that he did that at this point. Now, here comes the knight. He's going to tickle the rook. Sure, that's a strong centralized placed rook. The pawn is covered, so he's not going to be able to take the pawn, and so he bumps back down one. Okay, keeping the file, but now all of a sudden, 
Bernstein doesn't look bad, does he? Just one knight move. Now it looks like he has activated all of his pieces very well because he has activated all of his pieces very well. That's how that works. Really interesting how it can... Notice how quickly it can just change over. Now, Bernstein's position, you go, oh, you got to pay attention. It's amazing how it just comes to life with just two short moves. This is really cool to watch and observe and see what he's doing. And now... Now, what does that do to our psychology if we're Bobby Fischer? What's your first reaction? Come on, be honest. You go, <gasps> Not only did he wrestle a file from Bobby, but now he's using it. And he's on the seventh rank, which is just pure power. And he's hitting the vulnerable double pawns. This is pure power. I am just so not kidding. But you don't have to freak out yet. Stay calm, take a deep breath, step away from the table for a few minutes, walk to one end, get a drink, and come back and sit down. Just look. You're not in trouble, really, but there is something very important you can do at this point. And you say, well, I've got to get that rook out of there. No, you don't. Not right now. What you do have to do is cover your weakness, and you've got a magnificent piece to do that with. The king. Cover the pawn. Here's the other thing. We're in the end game, realistically. The middle game went by, and now we're in the end game, or at least approaching the end game. And one of the strategies of the end game is get your king involved. Your king is a power piece. Fundamentally so. Do not just leave him out there in, in the middle of absolutely at the end of nowhere. Bring him in. You do two things. You're getting the king more centralized and you're covering your weak spot. The king is a player in the end game. So, hey, Bernstein, because he has centralized, brought forward his two minor pieces, all of a sudden has a really nice coordination, he can trade down a little more now. And you ask, well, why would you want to trade down a little more? He's got the pass pawn. And it's true. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. And it is under pressure. Yeah, yeah, we get that. But he's got the pass pawn, and he's got another backup here. The pawn game is entirely in favor of Bernstein in an end game for two reasons. One, he's got a pass pawn, although really it's never going to make it. But Bobby's doubled pawns, and he's got them blockaded, whereas Bernstein's pawns, he can connect and go down. So the end game, uh, I think Bobby has compensation strictly because he's got both rooks and one minor, and he's only got one rook and two minors. Is this not the reason to swap off the rooks? Interesting thinking, huh? Regardless, now Bobby has a serious, serious issue here in that he does exchange the rook and the bishop will uh, come down and do the exchange. And now, and now, rook d1, rook across from the king and threatening the bishop. Yeah. <laughs> you go, well, all right, but still. Here's the, here's the issue. Knight d4. Diagon it. This is a great little protection. It also brings the knight forward centralized against Bobby. 
Very interesting. So, Bobby has to get going. And you go, what? Wait, whoa, whoa, wait. You can get a piece up. No, you can't. That would have been a blunder because he's got the fork. <laughs> Very interesting. Subtle. You got to keep your eyes on those knights. They are such tricky pieces. Yeah. So Bernstein got all of his pieces into this in an excellent coordinated fashion. So press forward, Bobby. Press forward. Yeah. Yeah, so he does. And fascinatingly enough, Bernstein's past pawn starts getting into this. The power of the centralization of this knight cannot be overemphasized here. It act look how it activated. It took away, well, it forced an exchange of rooks, for one thing. That definitely helped Bernstein. And now it gives Bernstein a chance to keep marching his past pawn. That definitely helped Bernstein. So what a cool lesson for us. Activate your weaker pieces. Don't just let them sit there doing nothing. The rook here was fine at one point in the game, but then when it came time to challenge for the open file, he did so. This led in turn to the centralization of his knight, and now we can see again some really nice coordination on Bernstein's part. Now the past pawn becomes a subject of interest. Seriously. <laughs> Isn't that fun to see? I, I just want to point out all this subtle, interesting chess play in an endgame, and you make one small slip and it's over. Yes, it's dryish, but you really have to play carefully. This is a wonderful game for that. Fantastic stuff. Well... Bobby goes rook b1. Okay, let's let's look at this. His knight now comes to e2. So here is another subtle great lesson for us. Do not put your king back in that corner or up here. Don't do it. That does not centralize your king. When they say in the end game, centralize your king, they mean it. Centralize your king. So Bobby does the correct direction. Not up on a wing, go toward the center. Even though you're on your own first rank, it's all good. Go to the center. And yeah, he's tickling the knight. That's, that's not the issue. The issue is move that king the correct direction. We're in the end game, yes. And it's somewhat drawish, but there is still ways to blow it because of the pawn structure on this side. You gotta be real careful here. So, at this point, the knight checked the king, and now the knight comes to c3. Right? What a beautiful fork by that knight. <laughs> Knights are tricky. You got to keep your eyes on them, man. So now the bishop and the rook are forked. Very interesting how well Bernstein is playing with his knight, isn't it? Okay, so knight to c3, and now you do take the truly. He, he took the protection off. Yeah, you got to take that pawn. There's going to be too much pressure if you don't take that pawn right now. So, yes, yes, he lost the piece. So Bernstein now is a piece up with the stronger pawn 
on the sides, the double ponds. Now, they're not blockaded anymore, so they are mobile, so they're not weak, but it's still really tricky. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that they have the same number of ponds, but Bernstein's is better. That's, that's good to know, right? Yeah. Yep. So a knight takes a four, and now and now he gets his own pass pawn. Yeah, let's let's get the pass pawn, and you immediately see Bernstein blockade that pass pawn. He's also bringing his king forward. The king is a fighting piece in the end game, so Bernstein is playing the end game correct. Jump right up to that pawn right now, blockade it. You don't. Have, it, yes, it's threatened, but this is great play. This is great play. So, Bobby is down material, but the rook is on the open file. Use that open file. This is beautiful how Bobby uses that open file. Check. And, of course, you take the pawn, and now... Bobby gets in-game insurance. Eliminate the better pawn structure in the end game. This is excellent. This is superb stuff we're seeing here. That's great strategy. The utilization of the open file to get better odds in the end game. To make sure you're going to get a draw. Because you're still outnumbered and you can be ganged up on. One is a long short, long piece and the other is a short. That's a great combination. That is a great combination to have in an end game. I'm not kidding. So, Bobby has to play crisp. Truly. And you see immediately, jumping right back into it. He did his he did his thing here. Man, do not start trying to worry about threatening that rook and get the knight out into the middle because he can hop to either side faster if he is centralized. That's one of Silman's big points. Boy, that's one of Yusupov's big points. You have your long-term hot rod here. And now the board is relatively open, so this bishop becomes... Deadly. Now it has great power. Get your short piece into where he can also be useful. It's obvious these are blocked here, you guys. It's obvious the action is going to be over here. So get everything over there. You're outnumbered, Bobby. Bobby's going to have to play very carefully. It's what I'm trying to tell you. So, Bernstein is doing it right, getting it in. Take the other pawn right now. Absolutely. Endgame insurance. While you can, take. Take it. Great. We're seeing some fantastic chess here. This is good stuff. Bishop will take the pawn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, classic endgame. Both players have a passed pawn. Now, this is technically a passed pawn, or this is technically a passed pawn, because once they bump into this guy, there's going to be a change. So both players have a passed pawn. This is going to be fascinating to see how this works. This is how it works. The the principle, and Bobby plays it so beautifully, that's what made him so strong even when he was 13 years old. The principle is, with the doubled up pawns, they aren't a weakness if they aren't blockaded, but you must advance them. Yeah, so that makes sense. Well, why didn't he do this one? Because that is a complete waste of time. He needs to clear this pawn out to get a passed pawn. That's why you don't push with the H in this circumstance. You do advance your doubled up pawn. That's beautiful. That's kind of a nice thing to know. And, and again, he has to he, take it 
you got to take it. You, you can't, man, you have to take it. Because you're not going to get in. And this is so simple and yet profound. If you do bypass that, you're not going to get your guy in. You're really not. This guy is going to start sprinting. So you have to take it, which opens up the age. Now your opponent has the pass pawn. And what does he do? Fundamentally so. Run like crazy. Yes! Yes! Go! Go! Now, you see the fabulous power of the bishop on the open board. He's got the queen and square, square covered from a very wonderful safe distance. You don't need to put this bishop right there to have the power to cover that square. It is just as powerful far away. That's an outstanding illustration of the power of that bishop. Now, here you can see that it's vastly superior to the knight. If all Bernstein had was the knight, he would have a couple of moves to make to cover that square, wouldn't he? It's already covered with that bishop. Now that frees up Bernstein to use his knight. There's the beauty of this combination in an end game. And the king. Because the king took Bobby's pawn there in the center. So now the king and the knight can team up against that passed pawn on the h-file. And the bishop can remain back as fundamental insurance that Bobby is not going to queen. That's beautiful to see. Bernstein's playing outstanding chess. This is superb. But march it. March the pawn anyway. Don't give up here. March that pawn. Get it as close as you can. Go, man, go. And here comes the knight. Yes, that's true. Don't worry about getting out of the way yet. March the pawn. March the pawn. Get it as close as you can. This is superb chess. This is superb chess. And you say, well, yeah, but. There is no yeah, but. Get the pawn as close as you can. Keep the pressure. Turn the attention of all players over here because you've got the pawn majority. So utilize that passed pawn like crazy. The power of the passed pawn always takes precedent for both of you. You and your opponent. And we see this beautifully. I mean, that's Nimzovich. We see this beautifully. This is so excellent. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> Here's why. <laughs> like this bishop, the rook is a long piece. So he's still got this rank and now he's got a target. So if you can eliminate the pressure from both sides, get rid of everything on one wing so that you can focus on doing your best over here. Otherwise you're distracted. And he'll th that very well could translate into a free move for Bernstein. Just take care of it. That's what, that's what we see Bobby doing. Where does the king go? Look, this guy ain't going to survive. Don't worry about him. Don't even worry about moving him into protection. Get the king over here. Because you got another pawn down here to handle. Get the king into the game. The king is a fighting piece, man. Yeah, yeah. This is great. Now, check. Yeah, that pawn was gone anyway. No sweat. We knew that. King f5... Again, moving toward the wing that's important, but stay in contact with your own pawn. Continue covering the queening square. This is just looking tough for Fisher, isn't it? This is real beautiful. 
how this is played, and what does he do? The king is a fighting piece, man. I've said that several times. Take it into your head and heart. Use the king. Get him in there. And you go, well, he's so far away, there's no hope. No! Wrong thinking. Get your king in there. Go ahead and take the time to get your king in there. Utilize everything you have. Fundamentally so. And you say, well, see, the knight's coming out and he's going to wipe out the pawn. So what? Let him try to wipe out the pawn. You just got a free extra move. Now, Bernstein must play correctly. Or Fisher will queen. Very interesting, huh? Fisher has put the maximum pressure that his past pawn can apply to make sure that Bernstein focuses on the pawn, but Fisher still has a rook and a king and another pawn. This game is not over. Well, Aaron Nemsevich, man, truly, my system, blockade the pawn, <laughs> blockade the past pawn. You must blockade the past pawn. Yeah, now it's certain that pawn will not queen. Blockade that pawn. However, hold on, this is Bobby the Kid Fisher. Oh, well, that didn't work. Well, okay. Notice where he put the bishop. The king is a fighting piece. He's contacting all of those pieces covering him. And you say, Criminy, you're in the end game. There's no queen or whatever. You aren't paying attention. The king is a fighting piece, and he's got a contact with every piece. That's good chess. I'm just pointing that out. I'm just pointing that out. The king is a fighting piece. Get him into the game. Excellent chess. And you go, well, the problem is he can go check. It doesn't matter. Get your king into the game. In this instance, he does come back down to e2 because he does not want that knight to fork his king and pawn, either pawn. Right? So he's keeping his eye off of that pass pawn as much as he can by trying to get his king into this. But because he has the threat of Bobby getting his king into this, this is why the king contacting all the pieces is so nice. That's good chess. Knight to F7. Rook to f8. Beautiful. Very interesting. Could there be an exchange of pieces now? Well, we don't know. But notice how tight the group is. This is really interesting. Look at what that king does. The king is a fighting piece. Ah, that's a magnificent move. The king is a fighting piece. Utilize your king. Not only does he support the knight now, he also attacks the pawn. Th that's an absolutely excellent move. That's fantastic. And he takes. Yeah, so the king will take. And so then Bobby will say, aha, here we go. And it was here that they agreed to a draw. This game was fantastic for learning principles in the beginning, the middle, and the end, even though it ended in a draw. Man, there's some fabulous lessons. So watch this video a few times and comprehend those lessons because that was exquisite to enjoy. So, And I'm always happy to bring you good Bobby Fisher chess games, which is literally every one of them. <laughs> and I have hundreds of more to show you, which I will do so. so 
Go enjoy the Super Bowl tomorrow and be good, do well, have fun, work hard, eat lots of popcorn. Oh, wait. Well, eat some popcorn, have a steak, pizza and beer, you know, do the, do the typical Super Bowl. It's the one day of the year. It's not like I'm a hot dog football fan. I should be, but I'm not. But the one day of the year I do allow myself to indulge, sit on my dead butt in the Lazy Boy and watch TV all day and snack because the Super Bowl is just almost a national holiday celebration. And interestingly, it's aired around the world, so no matter what country you live in, the Super Bowl's probably a big deal, more or less. So, and I will see you all in the next Backyard Professor Chess videos. I appreciate y'all. Be good. I will see you later.